Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is the In Deep on the Delta weekly fishing report for the week of February 29th. And we're going to really be focusing on largemouth bass here on the Delta. It's springtime. We're going to call it pre, pre-spawn. You know, we're talking about largemouth bass here on the Delta. Port. But before we get into that, I want to hit up the uh, Crappie Closet Lures Crappie Tournament once again. That's going to be March 9th up at Berryessa, Capel Cove. Give Marlin a call if you have any um, uh, questions. Marlin is at 510-691-0586. I'll have his information, or contact information in the remarks. Even if you're not going up to Berryessa, his next couple tournaments are going to be here on the Delta. Give Marlin a call and tell him, you know, you're, you're ready to support the tournaments. You're going to be down here when he, uh, when he comes down to the Delta. And let's get behind that and support uh, some of these panfish guys out here and give them a um, competition that they can come out and do some tournament crappie fishing. So the Bass Hole Spring Swap Meet's coming up Sunday, March 24th. We'll keep hitting that up. And you guys know that um, Rob has his... Uh, Delta Tournament Series uh, dates ready to go. So if you're ready to fish that, give Rob a call. He'll fill you in on that. You can get signed up to fish the um, Bass Hole uh, Delta Series tournaments this uh, summer. I was out at Real Custom Boat Works last Saturday. They had their Coast Guard boat inspection. They had about 38 boats out there. Um, I think it was a, a big success. Every there, you know, there were some 16-foot bass boats there. There were 26-foot offshore boats. Uh, people of all walks of life. About Jim's uh, been really uh, doing a great job supporting the the anglers here in, in the Central California area. Not just bass anglers, uh, offshore anglers, trout anglers. He's supporting everybody. He's been very generous, offering. Um, uh, different uh, packages to youth groups and um, just you know giving everyone support. Jim is a Lawrence dealer so you guys that are running bass boats out here I know uh, Real Custom Boat Works generally does a lot of custom boat um, uh, modifications for a lot of trolling and, and downrigger fishing and stuff like that but Jim is a Lawrence dealer for you guys that may get a new unit, you don't feel comfortable drilling into a boat or you just want to drop your boat off and have, have the electronics put on and working and come pick it up, give Jim a call at Real Custom Boat Works. His information will also be down in the remarks. All right, with that, let's talk about uh, what's going on here in the Central Valley. And we'll start off with the mother load. The two bright spots that I can see in, in, the, in Central California are Clear Lake. Clear Lake Clear Lake still seems to be producing pretty well and it's producing crappie really well still. So, you know, if you're uh, thinking about a trip uh, this next week, Clear Lake would be a, a good uh, spot to look at. Especially, You know, when it, I've been getting a lot of guys that are asking, hey, should I come down to the Delta? Should I go here? Should I go there? And to tell you the truth, nothing is really popping off the charts. And what my a uh, suggestion to most people would be is stay close to home and, and fish your, your home waters. Uh, I know there was a small tournament up at um, Pardee Reservoir last week. They just opened up and uh, I think there was maybe 10 boats up there for a, a little tournament they had and I think it was either 16 or 18 pounds won that tournament. First couple places had either 16 or 18 pounds so Pardee's not fishing bad. I have gotten reports from Comanche and um, Maloney's and they're just, you know, they're fishing tough. So, you know, is it worth driving up there from Stockton? Uh, I'd probably say stay on the Delta. If you're up in Angel's Camp, you definitely want to be fishing up there and, and I wouldn't run down to the Delta. Let's get into the Delta and the Delta is really going to be dependent on what happens with the weather coming up this week. We'll kind of get into that. Uh, weather conditions have been beautiful out here this week. Actually, they've been so nice that, uh, as you can see today, it's, it's sunny. There's not a breeze up. Um, water conditions are, are fine. The central delta is running about, I'll say, two to four foot visibility. If you get down around Mildred Island, down around Bacon, there are some places where you're getting five or six feet of visibility. When you get down south or you get into certain uh, areas, uh, in the central it'll drop down to two feet but generally you're getting about uh, we'll just call it three to four feet of visibility the guys that are catching fish seem to be catching the fish in the dingier water you're not looking for a foot of visibility but you're not looking for that five or six feet you're looking for that you know three to four feet of vis uh, 
on. Water temperatures are ranging from about, uh, they have been 56 to 58 or 59 degrees. A couple guys said they, it was almost touching 60 degrees this week. But we talked about what the weather is going to do. The last couple of fronts that have been, uh, that have came in have been warm fronts and they've triggered some pretty decent bites. This next front that's coming in today, Thursday, well I'm here uh, Wednesday, but coming in Thursday is going to be a cold front. It's supposed to drop quite a bit of rain. Daytime temperatures are predicted around 55. I think nighttime temperatures are probably going to be in the low 40s. So I don't suspect the water temperatures to rise. If anything, they're going to drop. And what I suspect this next front is going to do is produce a few short bite windows. So if you're interested in coming out to the Delta and fishing, just be aware that um, those bite windows are probably going to be short. You're going to have to put up with, uh, with some rain and probably some, some wind. Uh, and if that's worth it to you, uh, by all means, come on out here. The fish are moving a little bit. Uh, we'll go into what we've done this week. And, you know, it, it's been slow, but the fish are starting to pull up into the shallows, especially the, the bucks, and uh, you can probably catch a few fish. So this is the deal. Uh, stripers we're going to bypass. There are a few stripers being caught out here on the Delta, but it's just one here and one there. The guys that are bass fishing um, are uh, picking up a, a fish now and then occasionally on, um, on a jerk bait. Uh, By and large, there's just not enough, um, there's not enough numbers here to, you know, go out and target stripers. There are a lot of sea lions, and, and it has me perplexed because all the sea lions that I see out here, they are hunting in the deeper water where you would, you know, out on, on the, um, the, the outside breaks where they would generally be suspecting to find stripers. I'm not seeing the sea lions in that two, three, four feet of water like they're going to be when these fish start really spawning, getting up there and kind of rooting around for, for largemouth bass. Oh. There are a lot of sea lions. I have not seen them picking up uh, any stripers. If I see anything with a fish in its mouth, it's usually a largemouth bass. So striper fishing, just not a lot of um, lot going on out here, and we're going to have to wait and see what happens uh, in the next few weeks, see if they don't uh, come in with this uh, storm or something. All right, largemouth bass, what's been going on out here in the Delta? It's been slow. It's been a grind. Most people that are catching fish are catching them on, on worms. It's not pretty, but you know, if you if you want to catch fish out here, um, you probably just want to slow down and, and um, drag some worms along the bottom. That's been the number one bait this week. I will say that um, I got my first topwater bite this week. It was on a rover. I've been throwing um, a half an hour, 45 minutes each day that I get out here. I'll throw a frog in some of the prime water. I'll throw a um, uh, a, a rover or a spook and I'll also throw a small popper. I got bit on the rover one time. I think that was Monday. I called Rob Clutie or Rob called me. He had been out and um, he had had a tough day Monday and, and I mentioned you know I, I'd caught a couple of fish and I finally got my first topwater bite. Rob proceeded to tell me that he threw top waters for a couple hours, uh, everything from um, buzz baits, you know, down the line. Rob didn't get bit once. I have had a few reports that guys are catching a few frogfish, and that's why when I'm finding these just beautiful mats of, um, of duckweed that, you know, look like they should hold fish, I've been throwing frogs in there, and I, I have not got bit on a frog yet. So top waters, I would set that down. Um, I, you know, give it a try, but don't stick with it a whole lot. I talked to Nick Kanemoto. Nick was out, and if you guys remember, Nick had a 20, 24, almost 25 pound bag on that last ABA tournament. Uh, him and his partner had a tough day getting five fish in the boat, and they weren't big fish. Um, you know, and the thing about Nick is he, he's a good fisherman, he knows the Delta, uh, he's familiar with fish in the Delta. And he didn't forget how to fish in the last 10 days. It wasn't anything he was doing. It's just, you know, uh, that ABA tournament that, that they had a couple weeks ago was on the leading edge of that warm front that came in. And that one day they had the, 
uh, uh, Juan had, uh, I think, a 25 or 26 pound bag, and Nick had a 24 pound bag, and there, there were some good bags coming in. That was just one of those uh, bite windows that they happened to hit on the day of the tournament. Since then, it's been really tough. Uh, Rob's been out quite a bit. He's, he's struggling. He's putting uh, a few fish in the boat, but small bucks. Um, I talked to Phil uh, Lago. Phil's been out. He's been fishing really hard out here, uh, practicing for tournaments. And Phil's saying the same thing. He's fishing the Central Delta, you know, down around uh, Mildred. Uh, I, I'm sure he's out around Bacon in there. He's having tough fishing conditions. Uh, he's had some success with some decent fish, and then you know the next day he's coming out and, and it's it's just you know struggling to get a bite. All in all, uh, if uh, what I've been trying to tell people, you know, that have been talking about coming down to the Delta, I don't think it's worth traveling a long distance. If you're within 45 minutes of your launch ramp down here, I'd say come down here. Uh, we're going to have some unsettled weather. It's not going to be pleasant, but you might find a bite window. If you want to come out and you're thinking you're going to catch, uh, you know, six, eight, ten, twelve fish and get a couple of big ones. That right now might be a pipe dream for the next uh, few few days, uh, maybe the next few weeks. So I wouldn't travel far. I'd stay around your home home waters, and um, you know I wish I can. You know I, I'd like to see you guys come down here and start catching some big fish. I have been getting more and more reports, but everybody that's catching fish is catching the smaller bucks. There's a three or four pound fish come in every now and then, but um, by and large it's very slow. Uh, slower moving baits, dark colored baits, red and black are doing really well. If you're throwing a, a Cinco, you want to throw black and, and blue Cinco. Um, there are some fish being caught still on jerk baits. There's fish being caught on spinner baits. But all in all, it's you know you're going to have to make a lot of cast and a lot of good cast and a lot of prime water to catch just a few fish. So with that, I want to thank all of you guys that have been sticking with me once again through the um, uh, through the tough winter months and it's coming. Uh, the fish are in good shape. Uh, the Delta is in good shape. Uh, we're going to have a good spring. Whether it starts next week or the week after, it's going to happen. So hang in there and um, I, again, I can't say it enough. I really appreciate you guys. You know, I know a lot of you are tuning in, you know, not thinking you're going to be coming out here, but you're supporting the channel and I, I want to thank you guys for that. So until next week, uh, I'm going to go out and give it a try. And I'm going to give it a short try today with the, with the weather it is now. I'm hoping we get a little breeze up and that might trigger a little bit of bite, but I'm not expecting a whole lot today. Man, if I get a big one, I'll, I'll get it on camera and I will, um, I'll uh, put that up on the video. But uh, if you don't see it, that means I didn't catch a big one today. All right, the minute I say that, the bite Wednesday morning turned out to be exceptional. It was the top of the outgo tide. The first two hours was, was really hot. I think I picked up seven fish. All of them were quality fish. All fishing close to vegetation, three to four feet of water. Uh, and all of them were on dark colored worms or a green pumpkin worm. Yeah. So it was one of those bite windows. Uh, it can happen. The potential is there. If you get out, um, don't expect a lot. But again, the potential is there. So give it a try. We'll see you guys next uh, Thursday. And until then, good luck. And we'll see you guys on the river. <laughs>